Hello, and welcome to another video. <clears throat> Up here in the California mountains, mountain biking today, enjoying the first days of warm spring here. Between the California wildfires of last year and the extremely wet, record-breaking rainfall we had in the spring, I'm way behind. Still putting base miles in, still trying to get ready. But today, we are going to be talking about pedal efficiency, pedal strokes, pedal cadences. How do you go farther, faster, and with less effort? Now today I got a mountain bike, but these techniques work for both mountain bikes and road bikes. The only thing that uh, it's going to disable you, it's going to, about 50% will be disabled on you if you're not clipped to the pedals. Today I'm riding a simple toe clip without a cleat because when I ride off road I don't want to be tied in that tight because I can't get my feet out fast enough. But, uh, <clears throat> so I'm handicapping myself off road. But on road, I am tightly clipped in with uh, SPD cleats and these pedal strokes I'm going to explain to you today will work perfectly. Not being clipped in, just using a plain pedal, you're going to spend 50% of your energy just trying to stay on top of the pedal and you're not going to be able to do most of these strokes. So if you're wondering why every single racing cyclist or every single serious cyclist is very tightly attached to the pedals. Pedal strokes is one of them. Now I've noticed over the last few years when I mentioned pedal strokes to people, like changing up pedal strokes as you climb or, or as you go throughout the day, they look at me kind of strange and they go, I don't, I don't have any pedal strokes. And these are people that have been riding for 50 years. So you still got a, you still got uh, a huge gap between you know you got people that are gifted at birth with excellent genetics and they can they can do these rides all day long without any special training and without what I'm teaching today but if you're like me and you were born with the, with some of the worst genetics in the world and you have to work 10 times harder than everybody else just to stay up with them and you have to have a perfectly disciplined life of nutrition and organic eating and everything else just to be able to come out here and ride then this video is for you and of course if you're a racer and you're not using pedal strokes then you haven't even begun to reach your full potential as a racer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of these pedal strokes but this is only an explanation we're going to need to be able to feel the way these strokes work. I mean, I could videotape myself pedal stroking and showing you the strokes, but as I change the strokes, my pedal strokes are so smooth, you wouldn't know what I'm doing. You wouldn't know if I'm pulling through at the top, pushing across the top, or dragging through the bottom. You wouldn't know what I'm doing. So I'm going to explain how they work. But then it's up to you after that to use your body and feel your way through these pedal strokes. And it's, a, uh, it's like a ballet because I've spent my whole life trying to perfect these and I'm not even close to perfection yet. So we have a 360 degree, the complete rotation of the crank is 360 degrees. And then we have 90 degree positions. We have four 90 degree positions. So, as I explain these positions, we have a stroke everybody knows about, and that's the power stroke. About right here, you're going to power on through to the bottom, and then the other side takes over. Well, this one, you want to try and rest and not push down too hard because any, the more you push down on the back side of the stroke, 
the more the other leg has to work. So you're trying to relax your leg up on the back side if you're doing just that one power stroke. So everybody knows about that one. That's the way everybody pedals. <clears throat> the next part is as you reach the bottom, <clears throat> if you're clipped into your pedals really tight, you can pull through the bottom of the stroke like that. Now you've just used your strong quadriceps to power down. Now you're using your hamstrings to bring them to power back. And this is a pedal stroke I use about 80% of the time that I'm in a long climb, long steep climbs. I'm going to, be, because it's the most powerful stroke we have, a power stroke with a quad, a follow through with a hamstring, and uh, you're going to get the most power. And the third one is, as you come up the back, you can continue to pull up the back. Now, I don't use this one for any regular type of riding. Pulling up the back is something I would do when standing in a standing position and climbing or sprinting or accelerating hard. Now the sprinters, the, the ones that are really good at it, will use their muscles throughout the entire 360 degrees of the stroke. They'll power down, pull through, pull up, and then push across on both legs. And that's how they get such incredible speed, besides being, besides winding up to a very high RPM and being very strong and well conditioned. But it's an extremely, extremely high talented thing to do is to, is to use the entire 360 degree stroke on both legs and, and sprint up to 42, 45 miles an hour. Now you can compare this to, uh, you can put a, uh, a bodybuilder or a, or a power lifter or a football player on the bike. And without, without that talent, and without that skill, they're going to power down the front and that's all they're going to do. And even though they could, they could lift a thousand pounds in a squat, they're still not even going to come close to the speed of that little 120 pound sprinter or 140 pound sprinter simply from skill. And that's what we're adapting here for our everyday riding, for recreational riding. We are using these skills to advance our distance, advance our speed, and advance our efficiency on the bike. Because if you're doing, if you're using more muscles than just that quadricep during the power, power phase, then we're, uh, you've lost about 70% of what you can use. Because the last stroke I want to show you is the one across the top. And with that one, you're actually pushing forward. You're pushing forward across the top of the stroke. And this is the one I like to use in, a, in what I call a spin or a high, high speed cadence. I'll sit back on the saddle, I'll round my back off, we, not, we have a naturally concave curve at, at our lumbar region, but when I'm on the bike and I'm pushing, and I'm pushing across the top of the pedals, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into a position that, that rounds my back off, so that I can sit almost straight on the sit bones, and then I push forward into a spin. So I, I do push. It's the same. It, it is the same pedal stroke you would use on these cruiser bikes that are have the seats way, laid way back or a semi recumbent where you're pushing out this way. It's almost the same stroke. And with that push across stroke and, and a slight push down, nothing on the backside, nothing across, across the coming back up, just pushing across the top about halfway down, three quarters of the way down the power stroke and then relaxing. I can maintain a high 100 to 110 RPM with that uh, type of stroke. So if I'm spinning away for on the flats that way, and then I get to the mountains and I'm, I'm here I going into a, into a half hour or an hour climb, 
Then, well, I've been I've just spent the last hour doing spins at, a, at that pedal stroke. Now I'm going to spend another hour climbing, but I'm going to use that power stroke and I'm going to use my hand springs on the way back. I haven't used my hand springs at all up to that point, and that's how I can maintain the same speed all day long. I am actually slower at the beginning of the ride as I warm up. Once I come up to my regular speed, I will maintain that speed no matter how many hours I'm out during the day. Simply by changing the pedal stroke and, now I'm going to introduce the second part of it, changing the speed or cadence of your crank. As you change the speed of the crank, again, you are shifting between two different muscles, not the quadricep and hamstring hamstring, but now you're going between slow twitch and fast twitch, or muscles that are specifically designed for endurance and other muscles that are specifically designed for power. So if you're on a high spin, you're now using more of your endurance muscle fibers. If you're in a really slower spin with power going uphill, now you're using now you're using your power muscles. Now everybody has different combinations of them and everybody has different body types. So you're going to be more comfortable depending on your, your pedal strokes are going to reflect your body type. If you're a big strong power lifting kind of guy, guy or girl, because this is the same for women and men. just. Some people are born with a lot of power muscles and some people are born with a lot of endurance muscles. That's why you'll never, you'll, you'll probably never see the best power lifter in the world running a marathon. And you're never going to see a top marathoner lifting a thousand pounds in a squat. Well, maybe you'll see it, but uh, again, this, this is very rare. We're talking the extremes of genetic gifts. So if you take the power lifter type or the, or the, or the heavy power muscled person, they're going to enjoy a much slower pedal stroke simply because they, they're going to use their power muscles more. Now that doesn't mean that's the only pedal stroke you use. You still work to get the higher pedal stroke so you can't because even the p most powerful uh, body types out there are still going to have endurance muscles. So you still want to work on those and bring those up a little bit too. And then at the opposite, <clears throat> opposite end of the spectrum, you have the ectomorph or the extreme endurance person. Now they are, once they've worked at their talent, they're going to enjoy the faster cadence. They're going to enjoy cadences like I do, like, like 100, 110. And they're not going to feel as good trying to power through at a 70, 80, because they just don't have the power muscles to do that. And again, just because they have lots of endurance muscle doesn't mean they're not going to train for power. I'm an extreme ectomorph. I've trained my whole life for power so I could even up some of those muscles because all I had was endurance before. No speed, no power. And I've been working my entire lifetime to bring power in. And, and if you're on the extremes like I was, there's only so far you can go. So. We've talked about two things now. We've talked about the pedal stroke and we've talked about the cadence. And by changing those up, by doing a fast cadence on the flats or may, and then saving the power for, for hills. If you don't have hills, if everything's flat, you can still, you know, you, there's days that I'll power through on the flats too. Just do everything, you know, do something different all the time. By changing these things throughout your ride, that is how you're going to find more efficiency. And this more efficiency is going to add to your speed because you're not going to... You know, the person powering through that simple little one-dimensional one stroke, they're powering through all the way through the flats. Now they come to the, now they come to the mountain climb. Now they're going to use the exact same muscles, the exact same way, at the exact same cadence, and they're going to try and power up this, this mountain. Well, they're going to be twice as tired as I am. And again, we bring genetics in. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. You compare yourself to yourself only. 
because if you start comparing yourself to someone else who is gen much more genetically gifted in a certain area than you are, you're going to be com completely training wrong all your life. Get to know what body type you got, what you're good at. If you can walk in, into a gym and, and, and start lifting heavy weights right away, you know you're a power person. You walk into the gym and you can lift lighter weights for 50, 60 reps with no problem, but if you walk over and try and do heavy weights, you, you, you can't even begin to do that. That puts you in the ectomorph side. Now there's not just two sides, you got a complete range in between those two extremes. And everybody falls in somewhere. So you got the body type, you got the genetics of you know, your cardiovascular system, these are things that people are born with. And the, even though you can train yourself to be much better, I mean, I've trained, I trained myself to, to ride a 3,000 mile race. I trained, but I wasn't any good at it. But I was able to train myself to that point. But that doesn't mean I, I was winning or doing very well at it. So you can train yourself to certain points, but to compare yourself to someone else, that's going to just completely obliterate any kind of intelligent training you could do. Find out what body type you are and then work on the opposite ends. And uh, if, you, if you feel good at a lower cadence, at 80 RPMs, if that feels good to you and you're not getting knee problems from it, as your, as your cadences go down, the strain on the on the knees and the skeletal skeletal system and the and the uh, tendons and ligaments, all that go up. If you're in a very smooth high cadence of 90, 100, 110, you have the lowest amount of stress on the joints. So if you already have knee problems, and you're a power person you're definitely going to want to try and work on a higher RPM to take that stress off the joints. But you're going to be assessing that all day long. And some of, that thing, some of those pains you're not going to feel until one or two days later, and then you're going to realize you, that uh, you overdid it. And you either powered through too much that day and didn't spin enough, or you know, it, it's going to take years for you to figure all this out. And that's the that's one of the higher skills of cycling. Now you could you can certainly ignore this and just go out and pedal your bike. But if you enjoy actually getting better at what you do, it'd be like a tennis player. You could go out there and just bat it back and forth, or you could develop good swings and good backhands with top spin and back spin and side spins, and uh, and really keep improving. And I think the uh, the improvement, the training, the intelligent training that you do every day, at, which, uh, which will promote a better lifestyle, because you know if you eat garbage the day before, you're going to feel like crap on the bike the next day. So it, it encourages to eat better and, and the, uh, acquiring the higher skills will encourage you to be on the bike more. If you're going <clears> to... <throat> Go out and do the exact same thing every single day, you might get bored with it pretty darn quick. You go to the same place, you pedal the same way, you do everything exactly the same because you just want to eke your way through it. You probably will get bored and quit. But as you see as, as you see improvements and as you see your lifestyle change for the better, that would probably excite you to keep going. So let's go through these pedal strokes one more time. We've got, the, we've got the power stroke that starts about right here that everybody knows about. <clears throat> You're going to power through and then you have a pull through the bottom. This is pulling through the bottom is just like you were scraping mud off your, off your shoes. And then you have a pull up through the back and then once you get up here you have the push across the top. Those are the four pedal strokes. And you adapt cadences to that too. Now when I'm doing the long climbs, the power stroke with the, with the, with the, with the bottom pull through, 
where I'm using quads and hamstring all the way through, I do not spin a high cadence. I'm going to be 85, 90, maybe even as low as 80 as I power through these because to be able to use the quad and the hamstring together in a good, efficient manner, I can't do that at a high cadence. And I don't know if anybody can, but again, it's an individual thing. If you can do a high cadence and, and, do, and, and do that, more power to you. But you, what you're looking for is, is the efficiency of it and the smoothness of the stroke. And, it, and if you haven't worked on a smooth stroke, all you have is a square power stroke where you just eh, eh, eh. then you got a lot of work to do. Now the way to the way I trained how to do higher spins was in rolling hills. You get in gently rolling hills, <clears throat> you leave it in a lower gear when you go downhill and then spin it up. Spin it up what to the point where you're smooth. As soon as you're as soon as you start bouncing, as soon as, you, as soon as your butt starts bouncing on the saddle, then <clears throat> you've moved out of the smooth part, and that's going to be very rough on your body. So back off again until you, you're going to go just slightly above what you normally feel is comfortable on the, on the cadence speed, on that crank speed. Might be only 10 RPM. That's all it would take. And it's going to feel uncomfortable because you're spinning faster than you normally have spun before. But on every downhill you do that. <clears throat> and the next day, next day you do something else. And the next day maybe you try it again. And as you get better and better at the spin, it'll become more and more natural and more and more comfortable. Now one of the secrets to the smooth spin is what's called ankling. And that's where you have a flexible ankle. The ankle moves a little bit throughout the entire stroke. And that ankle is smoothing those awkward angles out of this round circle that the body was never intended to ride in. We were never intended to walk or run or anything in this perfect 360 degree circle. But <clears throat> the body has adopted to bicycle so well that the last report I heard is a man is ranked maybe 250th among other animals for speed and distance. Put them on a bicycle and a man or a woman will become number one in speed and distance. Now, it's not top speed. You're not going to compete with a cheetah. But my best 100 mile ride was five hours. There's probably not too many animals that can keep up that speed for five hours nonstop. And a, a powerful rider will do it in four hours. A really good racing cyclist can do 100 miles in four hours. Very, there's not too many people that can do that, but it is possible. That's 100 miles coverage in four hours. No, I guess no other animal on Earth can do that. Now, I don't know if they were talking about birds or not, but uh, <laughs> that's what I heard. You zoologists out there, if you're listening, you can chime in and tell me if I'm right or wrong. But that is the <clears throat> lesson today. Farther, faster, with less effort. That's bicycle efficiency. And that's, that's the engine working at its most highest tuned efficiency.